Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make this gorgeous earring. This earring here, I have to tell you guys, I have been working on designing this earring for days now. Days! This was a very complicated design for me because I had the vision for this earring in my head and when I got to the point where I thought I was finished, the earring was warping on me. So I had to do more to it to stop the warping and I would work on it for hours and I couldn't figure it out and I kept having to take it apart so that is very time consuming but um I kept going at it anyways I finally got the design figured out I'm so happy with it these color combinations that I have here are colors that I never have done before so I'm really excited to show you how to make it it's just a gorgeous earring now the materials I'm using to make this earring is from BeatingSchool.com by Erica Sandor. This is her bi-monthly subscription box. I get the turquoise level. She has three levels. There's a yellow, turquoise, and fuchsia, so I get the turquoise. And the name of the subscription is called Beating School Academy Box. And again, this is bi-monthly, so this box is for the month of March and April. And the theme for this box is called Art Deco. So I don't really know much about the Art Deco era. I did Google it though and it says that it was in the 1920s and 30s so I don't really know if this looks like if it's Art Deco or not so let me know down in the comments do you think this earring looks Art Deco but um, when I made this earring it made me think of the Emerald City and the Emerald City was in the Wizard of Oz it was at the end of the Yellow Brick Road so I think that's what I'm gonna call this earring Emerald City just because of all that emerald it is so green all right so what I'm going to do if you did not get this box I will link the subscription box down below this box again is from March and April if you're still able to get it I will link it below but if you're not able to get the box what you can do is just buy the materials here individually on their site so I'm going to link the materials here individually down there below in the description bar and I actually really like doing it this way instead because I know that most people have seed beads and like these these piles here 4 millimeter, 3 millimeter, uh, 11 0 Delicas, 11 0 Delicas and uh, 15 0s a lot of people already have that so it would just be like this stuff here that you would need and you would save money so um, like I said I will link the box down below hopefully it's still in stock at the time you're watching this and if it's not you can get the materials individually to make these earrings so let's go ahead and get started I this design here can also be worn as a pendant it does not have to be earrings and I'm going to give you the list of materials to make one earring because you can only make one at a time so I recommend that you have your materials out for one earring and if you uh, pick up extra beads or you're missing a bead you know that something went wrong in the design and you need to stop and figure out what's going on alright so here is the list of materials you're going to need to cut two six foot lengths of eight pound fire line so each earring uses six feet of thread. That's a lot. Usually most of the bracelets that I weave take about six feet of thread. You're also going to need a size 10 beading needle. And you're going to need one eight millimeter Preciosa Chaton. You're going to need this 10 millimeter check ring. This right here. And I had it was requested when I opened this subscription box to do another design with this ring because I've already done several designs with this ring. Um, I made two pairs of earrings with this ring. Put a picture up now. And I wish that I had played with that more because I would have actually liked to put this stone on top of the ring, but whatever. The earring is gorgeous the way it is. And I also made another earring called Nefertiti. I'll put that up now. And I've also used these rings to weave a leather bracelet. I'll put a picture of that up now. Alright, so this ring is awesome and it has so many possibilities. You're also going to need four 8 by 13 millimeter pear chatons. Now these green stones, they were in their own bag 
And in another bag was the 8 by 13 millimeter claw for the pair of chatons. So this is called a claw, but really I just call this a setting. So these were separate. This gold backing was not attached to that stone. I had to put the stone in there and uh, close the, the prongs up. All right, so I will list them individually down there below in the description bar. So make sure you get the, the, the setting and the stone so you can make these earrings. All right, you're also going to need eight five by eight millimeter Vex Olo two hole beads. These are really cool. That's what the bead looks like. Okay, and you're going to need six four millimeter Preciosa bicone beads, 10 three millimeter Czech fire polish beads, 11 Miyuki seed beads, and this is Jericho gold, and 11 Miyuki Delicas. This is a pewter color. And 15 Miyuki seed beads and earring findings. And the finding that I'm using right here is from the box. Alright, so you'll probably see that too on their website. Hopefully I could find it and I'll list it below. Alright, so that's it. Let's get started. I'm going to start by picking up one 3mm Czech fire polish bead. And I'm going to hold this bead. I'm going to slide it down. Okay, like that, hold on to the bead and the thread and pick up the ring and slide this down. Okay, and then go through this bead so there's a loop of thread around the check ring like that. Okay, pull that down and you want to have a six inch tail so Let's see. Let's find a six inch mark here. Okay, so I'm just going to scoot this down. Okay, so I have a six inch tail. I'm not going to tie any knots. We're going to leave it just like this. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up a Vexola what it's called, right? Such a weird bead with a weird name. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to pick this bead up. I need it to lay flat. Lay it flat like this where the, the arrow is pointing down and go through the bottom hole like this. Okay? Put that bead on. Slide that down. Pick up another 3 millimeter like this. And I'm going to hold this like that. I'm going to go underneath of the ring, pull the thread through, okay, those are flipping. So we have this, and then I'm going to go back through this 3 millimeter, and I'm basically just looping my thread around this ring and it's anchoring the beads in place. Now pull both tails tight, okay, like that. Now you're going to hold this and you're going to keep going. Pick up another Vexola and a 3 millimeter. Go under the ring. Pull all your tail through. Okay. See how this pressed against my finger like that? So this bead, this bead will fit through the hole. You don't want it to do that. So I, I just keep it pressed like that against my finger. Okay. And we're going to do this till we have four of the Vexola beads on. So another Vexola. Go through it like that. Same way. And then the three millimeter bar polish. Go through the ring. And pull the tail through. Okay, and then go through this bead, pull the tail through, so it looks like that. And this is going to be flopping all around until we, you know, get the bead secure, so expect the floppiness. Another Vexola, okay, and then a 3 millimeter through the little check ring. I'm just going to change position there. 
this is what I have. I'm hold this in place and go through that three millimeter bead. Okay, so now I have that. Now I'm going to do the top here of my teardrop. So to do that, I have to pick up two Delicas. And then I'm going to go through this pair, the bottom hole. Make sure that you're going through both holes. So, Because sometimes when I go to pick this up, I only go through one side. And then my needle wants to come out the back, and I'm missing that other hole over there. So make sure that you pick that up right. Okay, and then two Delicas and a 3 millimeter check fire polish. Hold this in place, pass through the ring. Go just like that, just like you did before, right? And then take the needle and pass through the 3 millimeter and pull all of this thread through. Grab the thread, go like that, flip that up pull that tight and then pick up a Vexola and a three millimeter fire polish go through the ring and I think I'll turn it this way there we go go through all those beads I'm holding it like this now and I'm gonna sew down through this bead Okay, and then put your fingers on it like that and pull it tight and that's what you should have. Do it again, another Vexola. Again we're picking it up in the hole that's pointed like that. And then my 3mm fire polish. I'm going through the back side, coming out the top. Okay, going through here. This is kind of how I started the, the sparkly, actually I called them Snow Princess, or Ice Princess, something like that. Those earrings that have the center, but I used different beads. And I didn't have this ear here, mine almost looks like a flower. Okay, now I'm going to do another Vexola. Again, I have to go through the pointed hole, and then my 3 millimeter. I'm going to go through the back side of the ring again and pull all of this through okay I'll turn this around go down through the three millimeter just like that I'm repeating the same thing I probably should have fast forward but I actually like doing this part it's so fun Okay, I have three on this side now, four on that side. I'm going to pick up another Vexola. Again, I have to make sure that I'm going through it like that. And then my last three millimeter. Okay, and then go through, I'm going to turn this, go through my uh, tail. Just making it a little difficult. Go up through the back. Okay like that and then down through that bead okay I'm going to stop and make sure that tail's tight this tail's tight all right so that is what we have so far and now we have to do the two stones down here so to do that I'm gonna pick this up again and this gets really floppy right here alright pick up two Delicas and then these let's see I'm gonna get them to lay right so I can pick them up I have to go through this way. Okay, again, oh boy. Make sure you get through both holes. Like that. I was trying to show you. Okay, and you need one Delica in between these two beads. 
and then another teardrop okay just like that and then two delicas just like that and then go down through this bead that's here right now okay I'm going underneath I'm coming out the back actually see I just flipped it I'm gonna hold it like this though and pull this okay readjusting hold it like that see so I'm on the back and I'm just gonna bring my needle up through the back of the ring and then I'm gonna go through the three millimeter I'm circling around like this so that both of my tails will now be coming out of the same bead okay so stop I'll pull these tight um, these actually need to slide there it goes okay so you want to push that down. This needs to be pushed down. It's slightly angled, but you do want it to be flat. So it looks like this. Okay, let me just straighten it out. Okay, so you need to have that. I'll zoom in. Okay, have it look like that. All right, now we're ready to move on. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, put this tail behind me on the back, I'm going to go down through two seed beads, like this. Okay. Just making sure that it's not loose. But those those uh you know those uh, teardrops are heavy, so that's why they're flopping around. Now I'm gonna pick up four delicas. Right there. I have four on my needle. Okay, coming out those two delicas, I'm gonna go through the second hole right here in the teardrop. Like that. And these delicas are gonna rest on the side right there just like that of the teardrop okay and then I'm gonna pick up a delica and a teardrop I'm gonna go through just like this slide it down This is the best time we have to surround this stone with beads, so I'm going to pick up four delicas and I guess I'll hold it. Four delicas, and I'm going to go through this teardrop. There's some more. Oh my gosh, it fell out. Okay, so let's pull this thread and then push that through. Okay, so now these here are just going to sit on the side like that. So lay it down, pull it snug. I want to make sure you could see. Okay, so. I picked up four delicas, went through the bottom hole of that teardrop, came out here, picked up a delica, went through the top hole of this teardrop, picked up four delicas, then I went through this hole. I'm mixing out over here, and I'm going to pick up ten delicas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Double check. Five and five. Okay. 
I'm going to put these seed beads on the bottom of this teardrop, so I'm going to go through the hole like this, and these are just going to loop around. Like that, see, on the bottom. And So I just spun this around the other way, and so you can see what I'm doing better. There's the 10 seed beads there in the bottom, and I came out there right. So before I pick more beads up, I'm going to pull, I'm holding it like this, I'm going to pull my tail and make sure this tightens up because right here it was getting loose on me and then I'm going to pick up four delicas to match the other side oops okay there's four I'm gonna go through here careful not to come out that seed bead so it looks like this Okay, I'll pull this tail again, right here, that working tail, so I don't have any spaces, and then pull this through. Okay, just like that. Okay, that looks good. Now, what I'm going to do is go around this entire row of seed beads that I just added, because there's... Um, a gap right here that has no thread and a gap on that side and I need all of this to be connected in one piece so I'm going to stitch through these here so I went through that four and one there at the end and I'm just going to go all the way around and come back out the same hole that I'm coming out now so go around pull it tight I want to make sure it's not loose is it no it looks good okay pull it tight though and then go through these beads here And then continuing going around through these. Up through these here. These four see the gap. There's no thread pass, so now we have a thread pass there. There's a bunch of little steps like this that I have to remember to do. So this earring works out and lays properly. Now I'm going through the top of this teardrop. Okay. Just like that, just to the top hole. Okay, I'm going to straighten this back out. That's my tail. I want to be the center of attention. So this is surrounded with delicas, okay? I'm coming out this now. I'm going to pick up a seed bead, a delica. Keep on calling them seed beads. There's like a fuzz stuck on that or something. One delica and I'm gonna go through this hole. Okay. So we're connecting this now. See? And then I'm gonna pick up four delicas. Like that. And go through this teardrop. Go through the top hole and while you're at it, also go through that seed bead. Okay. Okay, this is going to be getting less floppy here. It will, I promise. Now go through this teardrop. The top hole. Okay. I'm going to turn this. See right there, pull that, sew down through these four delicas that are on the side, right, like that, and then pick up eight delicas, one, two, three, what's going on, four, there's fuzz on it. 
Yeah, no, actually that's six. Seven, eight. Okay, so right, it seems so screwy. There's eight. Okay, slide those down. Now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through this seed bead right here. Not the one that's in between the teardrops, but the one that we picked up in the beginning of the four delicas. So if you're looking at this, not the top, but this bottom delica, this one we have to go through. Come on. Okay, so like that. See what I'm saying? This is going to surround the base of this teardrop. See, it's like an outline. And then I have to take my needle and go through this teardrop. Just through the teardrop. Go through the top hole. Okay, that's right, and then once you come out, go through this Delica, just the one, okay, just like that. So not the top one that, again, we put in between the teardrops, but the, the top one that started that row of four Delicas, if that makes sense. See? Okay, so I'm coming out of this one, here, that one, not this one, avoid that one. Pick up eight delicas, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, slide them down, double check, now go up through these four. Delica's right here. Okay, and you're gonna see. Pull that snug. See how it beautifully goes around the stones. Okay, now we're gonna have to add more delicas on top of those, but not now. Now is not the time. Now we have to go up and work in the middle. So see here how I have two rows? You have to do this. You cannot do one row around them. These here are so fiddly. They, they're they flopping all around and we have to keep them secure. I did the same thing on this one up here, but um, now is not the time to do that. We are going to do some stitching in the middle and we will come back this way. Okay. I have to go up through these two delicas now. Like that. Okay. And then go through this Vexola. Like that. Pick up two delicas and go down through the next Vexola. Pick up two Delicas and go down through the next. Two Delicas and through the next. Okay, then I'm going to take the needle and sew up through these two delicas. Just like that. Okay, pull that snug. And then go through the bottom hole of our teardrop. Make sure, sure you're going in one side and coming out the other. 
because it always wants to come out of the back on me. And I think part of it is because my my needle's bent. Okay, so now we're here. Now what I'm gonna do here is pick up four delicas and I'm gonna go through the other hole on the same stone and we're gonna surround this. So, okay, so there's four. I'm gonna pick up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I just get eight? Yes, one hopped on. This is why I always double check before I slide my beads down. Seven seed beads. I'm gonna go around the point of my teardrop here. So it looks like that. And I'm just gonna stop and lay this flat and make sure that this is laying right, because this is fussy, this earring. Okay, so, yeah, tension looks good. Make sure that these, these Vexolas, they like to be part of the problem. Make sure that they're pushed down and they're not pointing up like this. You'll feel them pointing up. Okay, so now they're all flat, so that's good tension. Now I'm going to pick up four Delicas. One, two, three, four like this and I'm gonna go through the next hole in my teardrop okay so I have this Okay, so I'm just making a point there on the top because I want to show you what this looks like. Okay, this is what you should have. Now what I'm going to do is I have to uh, go back through here because again there's no thread path connecting this area. So I'm going to sew up through the side going through all of these delicas just like that. This will save me later when I come back through. I'm going to skip over this bead though, the middle one, because I need this to uh, form a point for me. And then I'm going to sew back down through those seven. Okay, and just before you pull all the way down, grab, pull the thread back, the loop back, grab that center seed bead, and pull the thread down. Okay. And then I'm going to go back through the teardrop. Like that. I'm going to go down these two delicas. And then I'm going to go down through the Vexola. Ah, tell me here, thread. Like that. Pick up two delicas through the next flexola. Repeat again two delicas through the next one. Two delicas again. Through the Vexola. Oopsie. 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 Okay. So we sh you should now have this and you're exiting focus camera. You're exiting out of the Vexola bead. See? Right here. Okay, so out of the Vexola, straight into these two Delicas, and if you can, the next two. Like 
that. I knew you were going to catch something. Okay, and then turn your work and go through the big hole there, or the, the wide, the big wide area there on the Vexol bead, like that. And now we're more connected, and the floppiness is going to get much better. Pick up a 4mm bicone and go through the next Vexola. Another bicone and through the next one. I do this three times on this side. Bicone through the Vexola. Okay, pull that snug. And then what I'm gonna do, let's see. I think I go down. I have to pick up a 15 seed bead, super tiny. Okay, and go through this Delica here. So see there's a gap right there. Make sure you see. See we have two Delicas, there's a gap and there's a Delica. Go through this one. Okay, this Delica is going to sit in between the Vexola and the Delica's here because we need that space, that tiny little space, believe it or not. And then pick up a Delica. Okay, slide it down. Go through these two Delicas. Okay, and this Delica is going to go in that gap. I don't know if I just tied a knot or not. Let's see. Oh, I did. Okay, I have to go through here. There we go. I'll pull this down. You may have to push it in. Mine actually just went in. So see how there's a gap on that side and there's not a gap there. Now I'm going to circle around. So I have to go back through the, the Vexola again. Just the Vexola. Don't go through those Delicas. Okay. And then pull that snug, go back to the Vexola, and out through the 15 Okay. Now, my thread is on the top of the fourth Delica. So, see how we have one, two, three, four Delicas? The thread here is on the top. This time I want it to be on the bottom so this lays right. So I'm going to have a thread on the top and bottom. And I'm going to shoot straight through this whole side over here. Let's see, come on, come on, almost got it. There we go. Okay, so straight through this side. Like that. I'm going to go through this seed bead on the end. Then I'm going to pick up two 15 seed beads and my thread's coming out of the left side, looking at it on the front. So I have to pick up my earring finding and I have to go through it this way. Okay. Now if you're using, you know, the fish hook style, shepherd hook, or another one that you can open up later, then you can add that later on. But this one has to be added on now. So there that is. And then I have to do two 15s again. Okay. I'm going to go through this Delica again to make a circle. Like that. And then I'm going to sew down through three Delicas. And I have to turn around and come back up the side of this. So I'm turning here. Okay, and then I'm going to go up through these three. I'm going to pick up one fifteen. 
I'm gonna go up through these two. You know what though? I should pull this tight. Okay, there we go. So see how I push this down into the seed beads? Okay, and then it looks good there, like that. Then I'm gonna go through these two 15s. And doing it like this is connecting it in two places, so if that Delica were to break, this would not fall apart. We would be hanging on to the side walls over here. There's gonna be side connections and there's gonna be a center connection. Through this earring finding, down through these two, pick up 115 and go through these three. Actually, I can go down through all of them. Yeah, because I'm going back into that. So, go through all four. Okay, like that. See? And there it goes. And it looks pretty. Done like that. So pull that, and that's how the top looks. Now what I'm going to do is pick up a 15, and I'm going to go through the Vexola. So we have that. Turn around. I'm turning to the Vexola. Okay, and then go through these two Delicas. Just the two. We're going to fill this gap in like we did on the other side with another Delica. And come out this Delica here. Turn and go through this 15 and through the Vexola. Okay, push that Delica down. And we have a thread on the top and bottom of that Delica, like I did over here. Okay, and then finish out the side here with your 4mm bicones. So put a bicone in between each Vexola. Just like this. Now I have to make another connection right here with these sea beads like I did over there. So I'm going to go through These two, come on. Okay, so those two, but it feels kind of weird when it pierces the thread. Okay, just like that, through those two. And then through the next two. Did I get caught? No, nope. looks good, okay. Go through these two. Okay, so we did like a brick stitch kind of thing here, right? That's like the beginning of how you start brick stitch. And now we're going to do square stitch. And we're going to put another row of delicas on top of these delicas. We're going to go all the way around here and we're going to be exiting out over here. So pick up two Delicas, okay, and go through these two Delicas, what we just went through. These are going to stack on top, pass through these two, okay. 
Okay. I just pulled it tight, make sure they were laying side by side. Pick up another two and go through these two. Now, little tip when you do this, try to come out on the inside. So, see how I'm going through these two beads and I'm coming out on the inside? If you go this way and you come out on the outside, it's going to make your your work bow outwards. The thread path will make it do that. It's annoying, but if you just stay on the inside, it won't happen. Okay, so see, I'm on the inside. I'm going to go through these two now. Stop and push those back. Pull that tight there. Do two more. We're going to do this all the way around, two at a time. And it, it will be a little confusing when we go to do this one here, but um, I'll show you how to do it. Don't worry. Then through these two. Again, see how I'm coming out on the inside? I'm over here by the stones. Just like that. Stack them on top. Pass back through. Doing this square stitch around these stones stabilizes these in place. They're not so floppy. It makes it a lot stiffer. And um, this has to be done. You can't skip this part. You cannot skip this. And I actually really love square stitch. It's probably my second favorite next to right angle weave. I'm not a peyote person. And I'm actually doing two beads at a time. Normally this stitch is done with one bead at a time. But to make it faster, I do two at a time. Just like how there's a peyote. With peyote you do one bead at a time. But you can do a, it's called two drop peyote. Where you do two at a time. Or three. It just makes it faster. Okay, and then another two delicas going through these two here, stacking on top. This is also looking better too because if you look at the front of this, See how you can barely see the delicas on the back, but right here they're standing up. And I was actually wondering what it would look like if I did a third row. Because see from the side profile, just the stone is sticking out the top. And here you can see the gold on if you just do it one time. Okay, so two again. One, two. I'm gonna go through these two delicas. Okay. Like this. Okay. Now I only have one delica there, so I have to pick up one. Okay. I'm turning this around so I could see where I'm going. I'm coming out here. And I have one Delica right here, so I'm going to go through this bead. Okay, and then I have to go back through this bead. Like that. Okay, and I can't go that way. It's not going to work. But I found that I can go through this stone come out the other side and circle around. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have to keep going forward with this stitch. Can't go backwards. Okay. Okay, so we're coming out the stone now and you're probably thinking that we're gonna go through two delicas, which is what I thought, but it doesn't work out like that. We have to come straight out of this stone, pick up two delicas, and then we're going to weave back into the bottom. It seems so weird, doesn't it? OK. 
Okay, so I'm going to go through right here, this one, and this one. So I'll show you. See? Here's my tail. I went through the stone, picked up two delicas looping around. Remember, there's that one in there in between. We don't go through that. Okay, and then I go through these two. Now imagine if we were doing this one bead at a time, it would take even longer. I'm going to pick up two delicas again. You have to come out the top. Just remember that. So you could pick up more beads. Okay. Like this. And then go through these two that we just added. Pick up two delicas, go through these two here, like that, and I'm just going to do this all the way around. Okay, push those back. I don't know why they scooch forward sometimes. Two delicas again go through these two and then through these two that we just added stop push these in line and keep going. Okay, got my two beads through the two center and the bottom of the teardrop. I feel weird stitching this way. I just feel awkward, like I can't hold on to it. Because I usually go right. I like stitching right. Okay, so there's two more again. Pull that down, pull it tight. And two again through these. Nope. Always check from the side view. Make sure you're going through the right place. So right there I have to stack these. Go through these two. Okay. Two again. Through these two beads. these two beads pick up two go through two seed beads go through two place right there. Okay, now it looks like I just have to pick up one seed bead. And remember we had that one earlier. Right. So I'm picking up this one seed bead. And I'm pretending that this is another one that I'm picking up, but it's not. Oops. This one right here. Okay. Through there. And watch what we're going to do here. We're going through there, okay? Like that. And then I have to go through the two below it. So, to anchor it in place, to continue the, the stitch. So I'm coming out these two that's directly below it. Okay. Pulling that. Pull that tight. And then go through the two top now. Like this. 
Okay, and then back through this teardrop. Okay. I'm loop I'm going through the uh center of the sea beads. I can't help it, but this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going through, I'm on the top on this side, right? See him on the top over there? I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go around this back through because I didn't want to go through there. Okay, now I'm coming out the, the actual side and I'm not passing through those delicas again. Okay, now let's see, let's see. Where are we? Looks good. Now I have to come out of this seed bead, just the first one, the first Delica. Okay, so it's like this side, because see how we have this and this side going into that one? That's how it's supposed to look over here too. So now I'm going to pick up two Delicas. And I'm gonna go through this one, you know, go two down, right here, right here, come on, like that, see that, okay, they sit just like that, and then through these two. Okay, pick up two again and go through the next two. And then pass through these. I can't wait to bezel the chaton with you guys. That part is so cool. It's really cool how it's done, and I would like to use the technique of how I did that in other designs. I would like to try it in the, the Sparkly Princess earrings design, actually. But I don't have enough uh, beads, those kinds of beads that I use in that earring to make another one. So I'm going to go through here now. Through these two. Pick up two Delicas again. And we're just going to keep going, finishing this stitch out, going all the way around. I kind of feel like I shouldn't fast forward this because it just seems like it's kind of complicated and I want everybody to be able to make this. So, Two again. We're almost there. Through right here okay through these two pull that tight so we have two more rows and then on to the next part so two seed beads and then go through These three, these two right here, it's coming out in a weird place. So I backed it out and tried it again. Okay, make sure those are standing. Like that. Pick up two seed beads. And then go through these two delicas. And see, I'm having to bend this so I can get through there. And then through these two beads. And there we go. 
even though it seemed like that took a while, I mean, I don't know how much it took. My camera does not say the time on it. That's annoying. But um, look at how good that looks. That looks really good. I'm coming out of the Delicas, right? Just stacked them on top. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to go through this check fire polish bead. And I'm probably going to have to go through at an angle because it's sort of tight. Okay, so there I am. I'm coming out the back. So pull through and be cautious that you don't catch anything. Okay, so right there it is. See it? Okay, now I'm going to go through in between right here. And I got my tail. Okay, so just like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch this thread. Right now I'm beside it, but I have to catch it. So there's actually two threads there. So I'm just going to go like this underneath the thread. Okay, coming straight up like that. I'm going to pick up two 11 -0 Miyuki seed beads, two 15s, and two 11s. This is how we bezel our stone. I was so excited to figure this out. I was going to leave it like this. This was my original design, but I kept thinking, man, if I could put a stone in there, that would be really cool. Because don't you think it does look good like this, right? But with that stone in there, it's so much prettier. So two 11s, two 15s, two 11s. Okay, get the thread, and you're gonna go like this, underneath the next thread. So coming out of this thread, underneath the next one. It's gonna be a loop of seed beads. Um, this is just like brick stitch. But instead of doing it on the edge, we're going vertical? I guess how I would say it? We're, we're going sideways somehow. I don't even know how to explain it. Okay, so I went under there, and now what I have to do is go up through these two 11s. Now normally, with the brick stitch, we would do this. We would go up through these two beads. So that's why I feel like that's kind of what we're doing, but we're doing it this direction. Now, two 15s again, and this time just two 11s. Okay? Go underneath the next thread. And it's best to do it to go in between like this. See how I went in between the, the ring and the three millimeter to catch it? And pull that through. And then up through those two 11s. Like that. Okay. And then two 15s again. Two 11s. Go under this thread. And we're going to do this all the way around. So this is repetitive. Those two beads. Those two 11s. Pull it. And then two 15s again. And two 11s. Go underneath this thread in between the ring. Like that and the 3 millimeter. I caught the thread. This earring here, I felt like I did a lot of strange things that I don't normally do in stitching. And it's really exciting. Because I feel like I'm sort of inventing something. Especially doing this like brick stitch sideways like this. It makes me want to try this technique more. The way that I'm doing it. Okay, two 15s again. And two 11s. Underneath this thread. Like that. Pull it up through these two elevens and then two fifteens 
two elevens. That is a funny looking bead. There we go. Okay. Like this through the next gap, thread gap right there. Through these two elevens, back up to the same two beads. Two fifteens, two elevens, grab that thread up, and then sew back up to the two elevens. Okay, two fifteens again, and two elevens. Underneath this thread now. Okay, we are getting close to closing this up and putting our stone on through those two there. Awesome. Two fifteens again. Two elevens like that. Oops, I was the wrong way. Underneath here. Okay, up through the two elevens. Now to close this, there's no more thread for us to grab up, okay? We have a connection point on all of those threads. So what I have to do is pick up two fifteens. I'm so far away from those beads over there. I'm like uh more than like twenty inches away from it, it's hard to see. Two fifteens and go down through these two eleven O seed beads. Come on. Okay. And I'm just gonna go through the back of the earring right there just cause that's what I gotta do okay so I just connected those two I'm coming back up through here okay I'm coming out of those 11 OC beads but I have to catch the thread again and then go up so you're gonna have to bend this and try your best to grab that thread Okay, so I think I got it. I'm gonna go and lift this up and see. Yeah, I did. I got it. Okay. So going through. I caught that thread. Now I'm gonna go back up these two 11s. You know what? I'm gonna have to bend it more. I have to go up through both. There we go. Okay, I got through up through both of the elevens. Okay, now I'm gonna lay this down. Now this is warping right here, but the step where I embellish these gold fifteens on the sides that stops it from happening. Okay, so I got that pulled snug, and I'm gonna put my stone in. So put your stone in. You're going to want to push this down so it pushes the 11 O's out and they form around the stone. Okay, now take the stone back out because you don't want to break it. I've done it before. You want to get this all like laced up around the edges before you put that in. So I'm going to go through four 15's at a time just like that. Okay, so I do two rows at a time to save times, and I don't pull it tight until I pop my stone in. So going around, I'm 
like this. Going around. Find where you started. Okay, I have no thread path here, so I'm going to go through again. But I'll go through two this time. Okay, so I just have a thread path going on top. Alright, I'm going to pop my stone in, and then pull this tight. Push the stone down, push it hard, because it's supposed to rest in the ring hole, right? Okay, hold it like this and pull it. And there we go. See how the 11 O's, right there you can see their holes, how they just popped open like that? Now I'm going to go around here. And I can't remember if I did this twice. Because I come back to these later to embellish more, so... I gotta see. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna go through here. Pull that tight. And see. So right now there's two thread paths there. So can I pass this through? Again, that was kind of... I don't know. Um, you know what? I will reinforce it again later. So let's not worry about reinforcing it now. Yeah. So I'm just backing back out. I'm gonna take I'm gonna have to take my needle off. Okay. Okay, I took my needle off. Undo that thread. So I was just testing to see would this go through Again, because these are 15 O's, right? And you can't go through these beads a lot. So, I'm using Fireline. It's a very strong thread. It's my favorite. And I'm going to not reinforce it now. Because I think I can do it at the very end. So I'm pulling this tight. Making sure that's tight. I do have... I think that's where I started. I do have four rows that have a second thread path. So I'm going to go down through these two 11 O's. We're going to be coming back up here. So I'll reinforce it later. Okay. I just got to make sure that this stays tight while I'm moving to a new position. Okay. Pulling that tight. It is. It looks good. Okay. So I'm on the back side and I need to come up this three millimeter. Mm, I'm going to go up through here. I'm coming out of the 11 O's. I'm going to go through this three millimeter. Where's my hole? I might have to do this on the back side. Let's see. Nope, I got it. But I have to go through the back side. Exit out here. Okay. So right there's my thread. Again, I'm going to pull that snug. I'm going to come back up through the top. And here I am. Okay. Let's lay this down. Push the Vexolas down. Push that down. Okay. 
It looks good. I'm gonna start doing the Delicas again and just like before, I'm coming out of the three millimeter check fire polish bead and I have to pick up two Delicas like this and then I'm going to stitch back through these two here like that. Go through these two that I just added. Okay. Pick up two delicas and then I have to go through these two. And this one delica here is going to the back, so I'm just going to try my best and use that needle to lift it up. There it goes. Okay, so just like that. Pull it through. They're going to sit on the top. And then I go through them. Okay, pull that snug pick up two again and I'm gonna do this all the way around but when I get to this point here I have to do a little special uh, trick to keep that looking good so through two let's see there we go through these two I, I might actually fast forward this little part here. I know it's not too long. I just noticed my video is pretty long right now, so that's a bummer. But I'm showing you guys some new things that I've figured out. Okay, through these two. Stack that on top. Go through here. Two again. I'm going to go down through these two. I'm going to have to come out the side over here. Okay. So just like this. Okay, and then go back through the two that I just added. Okay, so we're now at the point, and what I'm going to do here is pick up two Delicas, okay, just like before, and I'm going to go through this Delica and the pointed one, but I have to do one at a time because of the angle, so just like that, okay, and I'm going to loosen that up again so you can see. So I went through the one on the side. Now I'm going to go through the middle one. Actually, maybe I shouldn't. No, I'm not going to do that. Let me see. Pull this through. I'm trying to remember what I did. Okay, I'm going to do that. Then go through here. Just the one. So I went through recap. I picked up two Delicas. Okay. And I went up through just this one, but I did not go through that one. I'm pulling this down. Okay. I'm going to go through this one seed bead. Like that. Or Delica. Somebody got mad one time I called these Delica seed beads. I thought that was ridiculous because they kind of are in the same family. You know, like bugle beads, they are considered seed beads, just a different kind. Picking up two Delicas, I'm going to go through, I'm jumping ahead of myself, right here, through these two. Okay. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to make this work. I'm going to go through these two. Okay, so then we have that. 
Now this looks, you know, puffed out. So what I have to do is go back through my green, my green pear thing. Come out the other side. Pear chaton. Okay, like that. And then, on this side, I have three, three data goes three. Okay, over here, count three. On the side, there's three. So I'm going to go through these three. Now, this is the first path we had when we first added these beads, the seven at the bottom. Remember, we came out of here, we picked up seven beads, and then we went back through there, we looped it around, and then what do we do after that? We, we had to reinforce that later on. Okay, so I'm coming out those three. I'm going to skip over that middle one now and come out of these three. And I'll turn this and do this slowly. So flip your thread up like that and pull this down. There it goes. It wants to not let me do it. So I'm going to grab it here. Come on. Right there. Just like that. See that? Now it's pointed up. Now it has this nice V shape. Looks great. Okay. So I'm going to pull that. That's perfect. That's what we want. You want that bead to point out. Now I'm going to continue the stitch like nothing happened. Pick up two delicas and go through the next two. Okay, I'm going to have to go out the side. I'm going to hold it this way or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then through these two delicas. So see, when we did that, we got that point there, but going through the top, again, that pulled the sides in, because it was starting to puff out on the sides. There's just little detail things like that that make a difference. Okay, I got two delicas again, and I'm still going through here. Bending this so I can get through. Okay. And then through these two that we just added, and I'm gonna pull that down. And then go like that. I have three delicas left, and that is because let me see two, two, four, six. Because we had to add that one there at the top. So when I go to finish this, I'm going to have to do that uh, single bead again. Four, four. Yeah. So I'm picking up two delicas. And I have to go through this one right here. And I'm going to have to push these up. Yep. Just like that. Go through these two. Yeah, I hope you understand what I was saying. Because we had to put the bead right there, and that makes this an odd number, that's why at the bottom we're going to have one uh, Delica here. Okay. So just like that, just there, and then pick up one this time, because we have to stack on top of the one that's left. Now if you want, you can go through two beads. If you can't get through, let me see, what I got? Okay, I got through one, so I'll just do one. Through like this, stacking that last one there, I'm going to 
caught my tail. Pull that. I have to go, because of the direction, I'm coming out the back, I have to go up through here. Okay, and don't get caught like I do. Don't do that. My thread's wrapped around. Okay, so... All right, so I just went through that one seed bead. I'm making this look more confusing than it is. I just added this one seed bead. I went back through the one Delica. The, picked up the one Delica, excuse me. Went back through the one Delica, so now that one is sitting on top, and then I go through just like that. Okay, like that. And now what I have to do is get through this three millimeter check fire polish bead. So I might have to come out the bottom again, so I don't break a bead. Okay, so there I am. And I'll flip this to make sure I'm not catching anything. Nope. Okay, that's right. And then I'm going to just go and move my thread up here. But let's see, before I do that... I'm going to go through those... 11 OC beads. So from the back side, I could see my 11s right there. So I'm gonna go through them this way. Yeah, so see, I went through the 11s with my needle and I'm coming out right here. See that? Pass through. Okay, I'm not caught on anything. Always make sure you're not caught on anything. And then I'm going to go down through, or sideways actually, through these two uh, 15s here. Okay, now we have repositioned our needle to do more embellishing and to make this lay properly. So I'm right here, and I'm going to go down through one 11 -0. Not both, just one this time. Okay, and I really like how I did this. There's like little weird simple things that I did. There's just a whole bunch of them to make this work out. That is the most annoying tail I've ever had in anything I've ever made in my entire existence. I'm going to pick up three 15 o seed beads like this, okay? And I'm going to make these delicas here pop up and I'm gonna pass through them and when we do this okay because this is kind of the sides this is what warps when we do this it makes the delicas pop up on the top and it causes the piece to dome and then there is no more warping and it's just perfect okay so there's my 315 so they sat there I'm going to do another row beside it so I pick up three again. This is so simple how it's done. And I go up through the same 11-0. Okay, you don't have to bend to get your way through. Bend your piece down. Just like this. And look. See that? See how I just grabbed those Delicas and pulled them up? It works out so good. I'm going to go through the next two 15s. And then down one eleven zero. Three fifteens. Pick up these delicas here, both of them. By the way, there are uh, three millimeter gold bicones that came in the box. I tried putting them here. It did not work. I had to do the super tiny bead. Okay. And I go up through the same 11 -0. Careful that you don't get caught around thread. You'll see. Go like this. See how you can see the shine of my needle? If you see a black line over it, or white, whatever color thread you're using, that's your thread. And back out. You don't want it to do that. 
because that can cause warping too. I'm going to go through two 15s. So see, this is why I kept this, uh, this is why I didn't reinforce this again, because I wanted to make sure I was going to be able to pass through here. And if this works out, and if I still have space, then I can reinforce those 15-0s again with another thread path. I'm going to go down this 11 -0. And see, I got that bent needle too. It's also helping me do this project. This is one of those projects where you need a bent needle. You know, there's just some designs I make where I have to have a bent needle. Okay, I'm going through those two delicas. Like that. 315s again up through the same 11 0 just like that okay stop pull that tight and then we have to reposition our needle because there's no uh, delicas there we have to get over here so I'm just going to go like this, through those two 15s, through the next two 15s, okay, and then through these, wait a second, am I in the right place? Okay, I see. Through these two 15s. these two like that okay and then I drop down through this 11 right there pick up three 15s again and then grab up those delicas Yeah, I think this looks a lot nicer with the gold 15s on it. I am covering up the ring and I'm covering up the uh, three millimeter check fire polish beads. And when this is done, you don't even know that the ring's there. You don't know that the three millimeters are there. You can't see them. So if you can't find like a nice color that matches your other beads don't worry about it you can use any color use a dark color or light color depending on what you're you're uh, doing because they can't be seen and if you remember when I did that the princess ice princess earrings with the the clear center I had linked the uh, rings for that in the description and I know that y'all went and bought them that was a very popular project and some of you might have leftovers of those rings in your stash okay so I'm going to the next one now those two because I just finished that row and then I'm sewing down Picking up three, and I might fast forward, I don't know. I don't know until I go to edit. And then through these two. Finishing the last one now. So let's see, do I have any thread on there? No. Okay. So see how when I do that, it just pulls that into place. Now lay this down. Push the Vex Olas down in the middle. Right? Okay. They should not be standing up. There we go. And then I'm going to pull this tight again. Now, I'm going to check and see if I can reinforce this again. I don't know, because I don't have a second full circle, I just have one. 
and uh, it is a little tight there. But you know what I've done? I take my needle off my thread, I get tweezers, and I pass the tail through there, and I'll go around. It's tedious, it takes time, but it's worth it. Okay, so tying knots. I don't want to tie knots up here, so actually, I'm going to drop back down into these beads. So, let's see. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to go back down to the 11s. Okay, and I'm going to get in this Delica row and tie my knots there. Or, wait a second, wait a second. Where did I drop down? I dropped down right there. Can I go down there? Because I would rather tie knots down there. Where's this at? This is at the bottom. I'll probably go around that with that one. Yeah. So, I was going to say I could take the longer tail. This is longer. And go to the bottom and do more reinforcing. And this here, I think I could pass through all these. Yeah. But I don't know. I'll go in this direction. Okay, so I'm coming out. The 11 O's on the bottom. I'm going to get back up into my check fire polish bead. It's on the left side. And I'm going to go back through those Delicas. Reinforce that area. If I can. That's what I thought I did last time. If it's tight, then I'm going to take my thread somewhere else. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I had to go through an angle. Okay, coming out. And I'm just going to go through these beads, like this. Actually, let's go through three and tie a knot. Okay. Okay, just like that. Oh wait, where is this one at? Oh, this one's... This one's perfect place. Actually, I'm going to leave this one for now because I'm not sure about it. And I'm going to go through to the... Uh, I'm going to go to my other short tail. Okay, so I'm going to tie this one in first. I don't usually do this, but it really doesn't matter. This one's in the perfect place. If you remember, this was going in this direction, so I can't go back through that um, three millimeter. I have to go this way, so I can go through here. And I like to tie my knots in between, uh, you know, like this in this area because we did two beads at a time okay so we did two beads at a time so right there we have two thread paths here we only have that one thread that's going this way so I'm going to tie my knot here so you just want to go like this catch up that thread okay make a loop pass through this two times I like tying knots and delicas because they have nice size holes that hides the thread and pull this down. Okay. And then go through like three more beads and tie another knot like that and watch my knot's going to disappear. See it? Not pull. And it's gone. So I'm going to keep tying knots, go through like every three beads, tie knot. I'm going to try to go this way, and remember, when I go here, I can't go down. I have to go this direction through the green stone, and so I go like this, go through the green stone, loop around, 
and then I can go up through that way. Right? Or I can come straight down through here, go through the green stone, and then go this way and not go down here. So you have some options. So I'm going to keep going and uh, tie knots. And I'm going to tie knots the same way up here. If you can, you can uh, go through the outside edge. Just don't. Oh, gorgeous. Very different. Wow. They're really amazing. So this is it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And remember, I will have a link for the Beating School Academy box down there below in the description bar. And I'm also going to have individual links so you can make just these earrings here. And this is it. I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope it inspired you and gave you some new ideas. Alright, so please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and make sure you click the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload new videos. And follow me on my social media sites. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.